Hello, hello, everyone. How are we doing? I uh, I switched up the way we're uh, we're doing this through YouTube, so the intro will be there next time, probably. Hope you guys are all doing well. Good to see you all. How are we doing tonight? Hope this is working. Can everyone hear me? Okay, there it goes. There it goes. Now we're cooking. Yes. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy Wednesday. How are we doing? I hope you guys are all doing really well. We got a very, very fun night tonight. Very fun night. I was using OBS. I was using Classic Studio to set, all, to, uh, set up the stream. Now they got rid of Classic Studio completely. So this new age technology is killing me. So I got to actually hit the click live button. It's not streaming all automatically through my streaming service I have. So it's fine. You guys don't care about the details. Anyway, double barrel finish night. We're going to be doing toasted finishes, double barrel bourbons. Just anytime they use a second piece of wood on this. Hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you all for coming in early. I saw a lot of you here early. Steve A., Will Henderson, Christopher David in the house. Major thank you so much real quick to Christopher David. He hooked me up with this lineup. Um, he sent me the Michter's Toasted Sour, Michter's Toasted Bourbon. Surprise edition. So let me quick put this up for you guys. Hopefully you can see it. This is what we're going to be drinking tonight. But one more was added, and I forgot that he told me about this. I forgot that Chris told me he sent this. He also added in a Woodford Reserve double, double oaked. So not just the Woodford double oaked, but the Woodford double, double oaked. So I've never had that myself. Never had that. So that's going to be really cool. Completely blind to me. Hope you all are doing well. Look at all you guys. Holy cow. Will be in the house. ADHD whiskey. Good to see you, brother. Hey, ADHD whiskey. Congratulations on a thousand, man. Well deserved. You earned every bit of it. Um, good for you. Good for you, buddy. I'm so glad. Ron Henderson, how you doing? Linux Cap. Guy Davis in the house. Guy, how you doing? Uh, man, we got a lot of people here. Whew. Thank you guys so much. Glenn Anderson and Peter White shoveling friggin' snow. <sighs> I'm sorry, man. Hang in there. Hang in there. Richie Z, Andrew Spirell, all you guys are rolling in. I appreciate you being here. So you guys saw that little overlay of what we're going to be drinking tonight. Most of them are in the thumbnail, but the Woodford Double Double Oak, we're throwing that in too. So we're going to be doing six. Um, six of these. Now I already show. Oh, I brought the envelope this time. Last time I forgot the envelope, so we got the envelope this time. We're good. Results are in here already. And um, I already shuffled these once, but I'll shuffle them again while I'm talking to you guys and reading chat, so... Mark Saliba, what's up, Bourbon Sane? My across the river neighbor, yeah, buddy, that's right. You got that right. Oak and Smoke, how you doing? Wheels in the house. Wheels hooked me up with a sample as well that is going to be in a blind live stream coming up very soon. And that's going to be a fun one, too, because I don't even know what he sent, but I'm curious to see how it compares. All he said is you may want to throw it in with some finished ryes. So that gives us a lot of options. A lot of options for finished ryes, so... Um, I don't know. Bob Poloni. Yeah, we're doing six. We're doing six. I'm, I tried to do about three quarter to an ounce maybe each. So, But some of these are pretty low proof. Like 93-ish, 90, you know. Not low, low, but you know. Michael Carr, how you doing? Jason the Mash and Drum. How you doing, buddy? Uh, Jason is doing a turkey shoot. He's doing a turkey shoot, a wild turkey shoot after, after me at 9 p.m. tonight. So make sure we're all going over there. I know we're going to be anyway. So, But that's going to be funny. He's doing, I think, six wild turkey expressions blind. Blind, I think? Got to be blind. Jason would do it blind. That's what he does. All right. Let's put some caps on these bad boys. These have been poured for about 15 minutes, as usual, just to let them open up. Because we do have some that are pretty high proof. Rod's wood turning shop. How you doing? Ooh, double double. Sounds good already. I've never had it. And Downer Pass Whiskey in the house. Brian Hoban, good to see him. John Krantz, you were here early too, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let's just start right to left. Let me get this mouse out of here. Look, unprofessional. I'm all in a tizzy from YouTube switching things up on me. I don't like it. I don't like it. The Oak and Smoke came in with a super chat already. Holy cow. Thanks, buddy. Uh, great lineup, Chris. This should be great. Cheers, my friend. Hey, any of you who have not checked out the Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews, Brent's doing awesome stuff with his reviews. Um, I'm sure a lot of you already know who he is, but you should go check him out. I loved your live stream you did the other night, by the way. 
I really hope you keep doing live streams. I know scheduling is tough. Believe me, I understand that. But it's live streams are so much fun. I love hanging out, talking whiskey with you guys, and I know I know you will too once you once you do it more. You get way more comfortable with it. Uh, Brett, let's see if we have a little super chat for you. I don't know what number I'm on, so. <laughs> oh, oh baby. Oh baby. yeah. So good. Oh yes. Oh yes. Whiskey motorboat early. Saffle winning faux show. Can't say I disagreed that WB Saffle was a special bottle. Special bottle. All right, number one, guys. Go ahead, throw it down in chat. What are you guys sipping on tonight? Anything toasted? Any double barrels, perchance? Let's go into the first one. Cheers. Ooh. Smells a little lighter on the nose, just initially. Mmm. Definite creaminess, though, even with the, the light flavor profile, the nice sweet fruit fruitiness, really. It's still got that creaminess, probably, from whatever. I mean, from the toast, either from the toast. I know, go Habs, I know. I, it's growing back out, okay? He said, Chris, are you even old enough to drink? I know. It's funny, I actually just did a whiskey tasting at a buddy's house, and there were about 14, 15 guys there. Um, and... I had just shaved that day and it was embarrassing. Like the comment, I posted pictures to Facebook afterwards and the comments were like, oh, they card you when you walked in, blah, blah, blah. You know, it was just, but it, the beard's coming back, okay? It just takes me like a week. It'll be back full, full, full. Steve A starting with the JD Heritage. Got 1910 and a store pick double oak. Very nice. Smells lighter than I'm remembering on some of these expressions. Um, not as much of that huge chocolatey note I tend to get. As, as I said, though, smells really nice and creamy. Brent's pouring some uh, Michter Sour Toasted right now. Hmm. Another one I have not had. Um, do I have the box? Yeah. So actually, one of my uh, dis one of my guys in Discord, Rob, sent me this bottle of the, uh, the Michter's Toasted. But it's still got the tape on it. For the stream, I tried to get it off, and like that's the best I did. That little tiny bit on top. He taped that bad boy up. Bad boy up. Which I don't know why it was necessary, because he hand-delivered it, so. But. How you doing, Jimmy Daniels? Sam Clark, good to see you. The rookie wine and whiskey enthusiast. Thanks for coming in. A <sighs> little bit of alcohol burn, but the proof is just... Very, um, very low, I think. Really got to stick your nose in there to get anything. All right, let's give it a sip. Cheers. Hmm. Hmm. Um, underwhelming is the, the word I would use to describe that. Thin. Um, it's it's very thin, even for my first sip of the night. Like, this is my first sip of the night. And it's just a little thin. Not bad. Like, not bad flavor profile, but really it just hits the front of the palate. You get a little bit of sweetness. Not a huge amount of that barrel char that I love. Barrel char toasted oak, but it just goes right down the, the back of the palate. What's up, Dustin? Thanks for coming in. Trev Wilson was here early, too. Everyone's sipping on some good stuff, Trev. You know it. Um, yeah, it's it's good. Like, it's got nice sweetness, nice fruitiness. Um, but uh, it's it's underwhelming. I think the rest of these are going to blow it away. Just my opinion. Um, I hate to use the word, but it tastes underproofed. People don't like it when I use that word. It's just lower proof, so... Bourbon Buddies, how you doing? Good to see you. Nick Foles, uh, good question. I see Christopher David pointed that out too. Uh, would a child, an underage child, be able to get this bottle? I don't think so. Huh? 
No, actually, this was actually from the same tasting that I went to um, with my buddies. We had 14 guys, and this was actually from uh, the store that's located in the other side of the state of Michigan. Not released yet. Don't even know if they're going to release it, but it's called Char Wars. And there's a little sticker on the back. I'm sure you're not going to be able to see it. But it's like the uh, rolling credits of the Star Wars. It's Char Wars. Sticker says it too, and they got a little char on it. It's awesome. We got to try it there. So good. I actually tried this next to a non-chill filtered um, Weller Antique Pick. Oh, that thing was incredible too. How do you choose? How do you choose? It's like two children. How do you choose? Love it. Love it. Mm. All right, let's go into number two. This one looks light too. A lot of these are just so dark, you know, from the barrel finishing, but this one looks awfully light as well. Ooh, initially on nose, I think I like the second one even more than the first. Yeah, I feel like the second one really jumps out of the barrel a little more. Um, someone can let me know. I can't remember. The, between the Michter's Toasted Sour and the Michter's Toasted Bourbon, which one is um, higher proof? Or are they the same? I want to say the bourbon's a little bit higher proof, but... Hmm. I'd say I get a little more barrel char on that than the first one. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not, now that I've had a sip of this. You know, it's more fruitiness, more sweetness coming up on the front. <laughs> you're right, Dustin, you're right. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> but I think one actually has a little more barrel char. Yeah, I think so. I think one is a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more punch from the barrel. A little more barrel punch. Um, yeah, they're both low. 90.2 versus 86. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. both, both fairly low comparatively. Not bad. Neither one's bad. Um, at 60, 60 upwards of over $100 secondary for the toasted bourbon at least. If that's what these are, who knows? Yeah, Christopher David said 45 and 43 for the sour. Okay, yep. Let's go to number three. Oh, baby. Now that's the that's the chocolate toasted oak right there. That is the toasted chocolate oak. Mm. Mmm. Much more creamy, a lot more vanilla caramel coming right out of the glass. Sweet, sweet oak on that. Still not a lot of alcohol burn, but just the, the creaminess on the nose. You can tell it's going to be good. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. It definitely tastes brown foreman. Um, I mean, that's easy to say in this lineup. You know, I got a lot of brown foreman products, but the back of the palate gives me a little bit of a, I want to say a little bit of a bitter oak. Just, just a little bit of bitter oak. Um, but man, that nose is so good. I could sit here sniffing that glass all day. Oh, it smells so good. Front of the palate's fantastic too. Holy cow. Front of the palate, so good. Mmm. Little bit of that drying, drying oak though on the back. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but I, I do not like finding that finding that drying note in my whiskey. 
Mm. Dustin said he finally got a C919. Yes. Yes. Thank you to Christopher David for that as well. Um, my favorite of the 2019 batches, and now finally was able to get a bottle of that. Oh, this this big debate like Stag Junior or Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I see this on Facebook all the time. Like, which one is your fla flavor profile? You know, all you guys out there, if you've had both, you know it's so tough batch to batch. It really is. But honestly, for me in general, I think I think I'm probably gonna lean towards Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I feel like it's a sin to say that out loud because a lot of people love that Stag Junior, and so do I. But I, I really think I lean towards Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I don't know. Let me know. All right, let's go into number four. Michael Carr says Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I... Yep. Ooh. Ooh. Stag, stag, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. <laughs> this is even more Barrel Achari, I would say. The Barrel Achari. You know, it's kind of giving me a little bit of a medicinal note, though. Like, a little, like I got a, a smell of floor cleaner in that. Hmm. But more char. I think more char. Hmm. Man, it is, okay, it's hard to go wrong with, like, I say this all the time with, in my reviews and live streams when I'm just drinking, like, I've been on a huge double barrel, barrel finished whiskey kick. Like, it's just good. It's just so damn good. You know, <laughs> it gives you more barrel and barrel char, which I love, but it, it usually is not like that drying barrel oak. It's like a nice, sweet, creamy oak. God, that nose is so good. That nose is, oh, on another level. Yeah, that's very true, Jason. That's very true. He says, Logic Grape Broker has been more consistent, but Stag Jr. has gotten better lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope it stays that way, too. We'll see. I'm sure they got plenty of whiskey. Not as much jumping out of the glass on this one again. Possibly lower proof. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave the top off that one. See if it gets rid of some of that alcohol burn coming back down. The mouthfeel, y'all can back me up on this. Double barrel, barrel finished bourbons. I think the mouthfeel in general is just better. Like for a 93, 90 proof bourbon, the mouthfeel is still better than your average expression. You know, I, I think so for me. Mm. YW says the Buffalo Trait Oak No is unbeatable and it's done right. You know, and that's true. You know, and when it is done right, some of those stag junior batches, obviously in like the George T stags, like the 18, 17, so good. So good. They just nail that cherry, deep, rich oak with baking spices. And it's so good. Love it. A toasted barrel isn't going to impart much color, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, the thing about Michter's is they really, they toast all their barrels. Um... They do a light toast on every barrel they do, but this was like an extra, I don't know if it was an extra barrel specifically they did. I think they, I want to say they put it into an extra toasted barrel, but not 100% sure. Hmm, another fantastic nose. The banana's coming out more on this one than the previous two expressions. It's all kind of, like I said, that brown form and flavor profile for these three, these last three. Banana is heavier in three than it is um, four, for sure. 
Hmm. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. I really like the finish on that. That's what I want in like a toasted bourbon. You know, it's got the the long finish, the long lingering finish with the oak, but it's the sweet oak, no drying. No drying notes. That's good. <sighs> well, now that tastes, that, that tastes a little bit thin. What's going on? What is going on? I'm leaving the caps off all these. I had these opening up for like 15 minutes, but a couple of these I've gotten alcohol burn, alcohol vapors. I'm going to leave them all off. Caps are coming off. Way with you. Lots of brown foreman, not mictors. <laughs> yeah, it could be. I know. I know. All right, let's go to the last one. Um, what's the proof on the double double oaked? Anybody know that? It smells even richer. Oh man. Oh man, that's tough. That is tough. Like I said, they're all good. They're all good. You're not going to go wrong with any of these. We're going to be nitpicking these for sure. Um, I think I like five to four. Yeah, more on the nose on five. For sure. Mm-hmm. 45. Okay, so 45% on the double, double oak too. Gotcha. I think the depth of flavor is better in five, though. I really do. I really think that's better. More rich, more deep. These are all very chocolatey. That's the beautiful thing about toasted barrels. It gives you a nice, like, Nestle's chocolate powder. Chocolate milk mix with ice cream. I just sniffed my water. Oh, boy. This can't go on the table. So what six whiskeys do to you guys? Hope you know that. Hope you know that. All right, let's work our way back down, and then I'll do some side-by-sides this way down, too, because I'm very torn with which one I like most right now. Hmm. I like that. Man, do I like that. That's really good. Whatever that is, it's done well. That's like extra, extra charry. <laughs> it's got extra char in it. Um, yeah, I don't know which one it could be. I'm not guessing. I'm not going to guess which one these are till the very end. Three, what, two or three of these. I haven't even, no, just two. I The toaster, uh, toasted sour, the toaster, the toaster. Mictor's toasted sour and the, um, Double, double oat I have not tried, so I don't know what to expect from those, you know. But there is a clear difference in the flavor profile between these four and the first two. Um, what's the most chocolatey bourbon you have had? Mine is Stag Jr. Yes, I've had a couple Stag Jr. batches that were an absolute just like cher chocolate covered cherry. That's what, that's what I describe it as, that creamy center of a chocolate covered cherry. But honestly, I get a whole bunch of chocolate notes in Brown Foreman in general. Like a lot more in the Heritage Barrel versus regular Jack Daniels, single barrel or barrel proof. But almost every Old Forester product, I get the chocolate note. I'd say Woodford Double Oak is one of the heaviest chocolate notes I think I get in a bourbon. 
you know, that and like vanilla and chocolate. Those are the two major notes that come out for me in Woodford Double Oak. I know, honey, I don't have to drink six. I'm just tasting six. I'm not going to drink all the glasses. I'm just tasting six and doing some side-by-sides, babe. All's well, ends well. James Bradley, how you doing? Sunday evening, Scott, Scotch, good to see you. And Moose76. Brian Haycraft says, uh, Woodford Chocolate Rye was a disappointment. I couldn't agree more with you. Really, It really was. I was not a fan. Not a fan. Buddhas, how you doing? Much thinner. Much thinner than sample six here. This is, yeah, just much more rich. Mouth feels better, finish is better. Overall flavor profile is better. This is really interesting. So if the double double oaked is 90 proof, and the regular double oak is 90 proof. I'm really curious to see how much that additional barrel really makes a difference. You know, does it really, is it really going to make that much of a difference? We'll see. We'll see if it adds more depth and complexity. Yeah, definitely get some chocolate on some of the Elijah Craig barrel proofs too. Some are so oak forward, but some of the Elijah Craig barrel proofs are the opposite. Just super sweet, baking spices. And then, like, there's the balance. You know, some of those batches have the balance, too, which is really nice. Well, like, yeah, I mean, the, the Woodford Chocolate Malta Rye is clearly chocolate. Like, that's what they're going for. Um, if you've ever tried Belcones Rye, that's also, like, a chocolate malta rye they use. And it's the same thing. It's, like, it's pure chocolate, but it's it's different. Like, the maltiness over... It didn't mesh well with the, with the chocolatiness that was coming through. You know, that's me. ADHD whiskey, I know. I know. She's a good goyle. She's looking after the boys for me. They were on another level tonight. Shout out to Mrs. Bourbon Sane for taking care of the boys. I love her. Double Double Oaks certainly taste different, Dustin said. <laughs> I just read Dustin's comment. One never has to drink six, but when one can, they should. <laughs> You're right. Triple oak could be coming. You know, whatever one this is, I didn't get an off-putting oak note. Like, I really didn't. So triple oak's a possibility. And to the point where I'm licking a barrel, it's it can happen. It can happen. I need to um, try that again. I totally forgot what that tasted like. A little bit thin. A little bit thin. How much do you think Booker should cost? Ooh. That's a good question. Um, depends on the batch. I mean, that's the truth. I, it's a terrible answer, but it depends on the batch. Teresa's batch should be about a $25 bourbon, in my opinion. But, I mean, some of the other batches are really good. Kitchen Table is really good. I'd pay $65, $70 for that. Kathleen's batch I really, really loved. Again, $65, $70. State minimum is 80 and going up in Michigan. It might even be higher now, like 85, 90. I don't know if I'm going to pick up the batches. Unless Jason reviews them and says they're like out of this world good, I don't know if I'm going to pick up the, the batches. We'll, we'll see, you know. But in my area, it's 80 to 90 bucks all day. Michael Carter said the same thing, 80 to 90 in my area. It's true. That's such a tough buy. That is such a tough buy with the market the way it is. It's just true. He speaks the truth. 40 bucks max, Dustin says. Yeah. <laughs> think of what's at the like think of what's at the $60 price range already. Stay Junior, Large Grade Barrel Proof, Russell's Picks, Rare Breeds much cheaper. Uh, the list goes on and on. I mean, come on. It's tough. Mm. Now that's good. That is damn good. One and four, nope, not right at all. Three and six are the words I'm looking for, are good.
Oh man, that's tough. That is so tough. How do we choose? How do we choose whiskey? <sighs> okay, moving on to um, number two again. It's just thin. Not bad flavor profile. I'm getting slight graininess, like it kind of tastes young. That youthful grassy grainy note is, is kind of coming through. For, or the, the last four we had here really had none of that at all. But the first time, first time through I didn't notice that, but this time the graininess is showing on sample two here. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. Holy crap, I worked back through these way too quick. Well, don't worry, we'll be talking and trying stuff side by side for a while. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Oh man. Oh man. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I totally forgot about knob prefix at that price. Cheap, like thirty bucks cheaper than a Booker's batch. Usually better. I think. So. All right. Let's go one more time through these because. I really can't make up my mind. I really can't. Plus the second time I went through it was like five minutes, so it doesn't really count. Let me get some more water. I wanna know your thoughts on old Ezra 7 barrel strength. I understand the price. It's nice and cheap, which is great. Let me know what you think about it first, and then I'll talk about it a little bit to see, to let you know what I, how I feel about it. So the availability is kind of, kind of sketch depending on where you live. Um, I found it a couple times, two, three times, but I'd like to hear what you guys think about it. Like, do you think it's good value for what you're getting? Underwhelms. It's incredible for what it is. Like, what do you guys think? Let me know. I'm going to do this one more time here. This is very fruity. I mean, it's completely different whiskey. I wouldn't really even guess that this is a toasted barrel or barrel finish at all compared to compared to the rest, really. You know, it's just seems so light. Slight oak, but nice, nice fruitiness. You know, it's got nice peach pear notes. It's good. Ezra 7 is decent, middle of the road, decent price. Old Ezra 7 barrel proof is great for 40 bucks. About 40 here, worth every penny. Never seen it for sale. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing with Old Ezra. I've only had two bottles. Um, I think I have another unopened bottle somewhere, but... It... I think there's... I can't really say it off only just doing two two bottles ever, I guess, but um, I think there's batch inconsistency. And I've, I, I've talked to people on Instagram about this too, and they said the same thing. I had one bottle that I loved so much, like I would have paid electric rate barrel proof prices for. But the second bottle I had was like a $20 bottle. Like it tasted so, like such bitter drying oak. So off-putting. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Nick Foles, funny you should say that. Um, he asked, Bourbon Sane, will you ever get Mrs. Bourbon Sane back on the stream again? She had a very stressful day at work today, and she's like, I may just join you on the live stream tonight. I just might do it. I, I'm open to trying a new bourbon, she said, because I'm so stressed today. I said, 
Come on down. Or I said, you know what? How about next Wednesday? You will put the boys to bed early. Come on down. I'll set you up. Uh, best whiskeys for your wife episode or something. You know, best whiskeys for beginning whiskey drinker. You know, last time we did it, we did it wrong. We did it with Bobby and Sam for My Whiskey She Wines. She tried like 15 whiskeys in one night. She was sick all day the next day. So my fault, I'll take I'll take blame for that. But if we do it right, we have her, give her four or five tiny sips of things, ease her into it. I think it'll be fun. I think she'll have a great time. You still in here, babe? She usually falls asleep a quarter of the way through my streams. So she's probably sleeping by now, but I think it'd be fun. Come on down, <laughs> Trev says. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was your barrel proof for 35. Figured I didn't like it neat to be finding cocktails. You're right. You are right. Dustin, that's actually not a bad idea. I'm open to suggestions, guys. Drop them in right now. What is the converting whiskey? You know, I had her try Monkey Shoulder, just a basic scotch, see if she likes scotch versus bourbon. Had her try Angel's Envy. Had her try a rum finished, the worst freaking bottle I think I might have ever had in my entire life. Freaking Tullamore Dew Caribbean cask. That was ugh, disgusting. Disgusting. Ugh. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. I love the uh, the encouragement, guys. Keep it going. <laughs> Peer pressure is a thing. Um, Caribbean cat. <laughs> Sorry. I, that's probably what made her sick to begin with, just that one bottle. So, But we'll see. She might come back. You know, she might come back. I was saying, like, let's do a cocktail night. You know, I wanted to do the idea of trying six old fashions with all different types of whiskey in it and seeing which, which one's best. You know, I've, I've made her an old fashioned before and she's, I wouldn't say liked it, but she's tolerated it. So, oh, Michael Carr. Yeah, that's low. That's low, brother. I don't blame you. You know, I don't blame you. I really don't. I'm not as entertaining as the bourbon junkies. So, <laughs> Yep, Angels Envy Port Finish, Jameson Castmates. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I have to think about that. Where was I? Or two? Give her Wild Turkey 101. I'm thinking the chocolatey stuff, like the Heritage Barrel, like Woodford Double Oaked, maybe. Something really sweet. Like, she's got a sweet tooth, so I think she'd like the sweet, sweet stuff. Hmm. Bourbon Buddy, she usually drinks White Claws. <laughs> Any whiskey tastes like White Claws. Um, and wine. She likes very sweet wine, like Moscatos and Rieslings. That's about it, ma'am. I've tried to get her to try some bourbon. She's had it, you know, she's done, tried some sips before, but every time she's just like, ugh, ugh, you know. Eagle Rare is a good one. I've got an Eagle Rare store pick that would work. Knob Creek Maple. Ooh, maple y. That's possible. Red Breast 12, Peter says, but I only have the cast strength, so that'll kick her in the face. Done. <laughs> 1910 for the win. Mm. Yeah, she, uh, she's got a big sweet tooth. She likes that chocolatey. I don't know. Uh, she has not had Basil Hayden's because I don't have Basil Hayden's because it's Basil Hayden's myself, but, you know. Um, old granddad one fourteen is that close enough to Basil? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, screwball, I could get her to try probably if I just mix it in with like a milkshake, that'd be good. Long branch is a good one too. That nice mesquite, sweet sweet note. Yeah. Anthony Orlando says that's the only wine his girl drink. Yep. Yep, screwball, yeah. <laughs> Very true, Dustin. Very true. That's pretty nice, too. Is that the one I said before? These two? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think these two are, are really pushing the top for me. It's got some proof punch too, though. It smells more mellow. I 
is so freaking good. Oh, so good. God Complex News says, go with Yellow Spot. You know, I've been looking for an excuse to pick up a Yellow Spot. I really have. I really have. <laughs> yeah, AD, I, I'm sorry. That was probably rude to say, ADHD Whiskey, but... Um, yeah, I don't have Basil Hayden just because it's too low proof is the, is the truth. Um, you, you know what I meant. Once we're used to high proof stuff, it's like, I can't even use it as a cocktail drink because it just tastes like I'm drinking bitters and simple syrup, you know, I hate to say it. <laughs> Should we make some sherry to Irish? I know, I know that that's, I think that would be the one red breast 12, just the regular, not the cast drink, but like Dustin said, I can add some water to it. Um, oh, I'm sure the cast drink Basil Hayden's 10 is good. High rye cast drink. I'm sure that's delicious. I wouldn't argue that at all. Yeah, Michael Carr, that's... I could do that. Started with a, a bourbon barrel-aged red wine. I gotta find one that's sweet enough, because she doesn't like the drying oak either, you know? Like, dry a dry red. So, I... And I personally... I mean, I, I like drier red wines, but... Aaron loves Booker's. Uh, yeah. I... I could have her try a sip of Booker's, but she's just going to get all alcohol, I would think. You know. Um, Brent from the Oak and Smoke says, I think, uh, speaking of inconsistent, I think Blanton's is very inconsistent now. There's previous bottling, 2016 and previous. Not so much the new stuff. It's kind of inconsistent. I would agree. Um, I've only tried one older Blanton's, which was like a 15, I think it was. So not even that old, really, but... And the 15 I tried was way better than pretty much any barrel I've had nowadays, which is probably five or six different bottles, barrels. Um, it's, I'm convinced that what they're putting in Blanton's now is what Ancient Age used to be, if that makes sense. So like Ancient Age is Blanton's now, you know, Ancient Age from 10 years ago is Blanton's. And we've kind of talked about this before too, but I've talked to other people in locally, like my, my friends too and it's just like ancient age was really good i've again only tried one older ancient age which was not even same thing not even that, maybe a 15 again better though like it was still even better four or five years ago so i don't know blanton's is single barrel so it's hard to be like hard, hard to say for sure you don't know you know um oh i didn't put the thumbnail in here but speaking of that next week I'll say it now on my live stream. I'm going to be doing um, single barrel head to head. So that's going to be fun. We're going to do another six whiskeys. Sorry, honey. It's six whiskeys again. But again, look at how much I have left in each of these glasses. You know, it's fine. You can join me. Um, if So if if Mrs. Bourbon Sane changes her mind and wants to do a, you know, new to whiskey night type thing, we'll do that. But otherwise, we're going to be doing single barrel head to head. McKenna, Blanton's, possibly Rebel Yell 10 year. Um, Knob Creek single barrel. What else? There's more. I can't remember. Russell's Reserve single barrel, I think I put in there. That's gonna be fun. Best single barrel in the market. Ooh, there's a question for you. Best single barrel in the market. I'm sorry guys, I haven't been drinking. Let, let me let me get back to this. Dram Hound, thanks for coming in, buddy. You're not late, you're just on time. Oh, the Ardbeg? No, she tried She tried Ardbeg with uh, Bobby and Sam, and that did not... Nope. She can't even stand me so smoking a cigar, let alone it lingering in her mouth for 24 hours plus. So that's not, <laughs> not going to work. I love it, though. I love that stuff. Ooh, Four Roses single. That's, that's in there. That's in there. Good call, Nick. You. Oh, Old Forester single barrel. I can't do seven whiskeys. I cannot do seven whiskeys. It's not possible. I don't have room on the table. I can't. I just can't. No, I want to do available, like, findable stuff. So, I mean, Blanton's is in there, but, meh. You know, it's kind of findable. I can find it many times a year, but it depends on, you know. Oh, my gosh. The Rebel Yield 10, Jason, is just, <sighs> get out of here. Like, it is so good. I don't understand. Like, it's no one talks about it. Nobody. Nobody talks about it. That is one of the most underrated bottles out there. I really think so. Whiskey Explorer, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. 
Peerless single barrel. I don't know. I don't know. I was so underwhelmed at the at Peerless when I was there, which I still haven't filmed my Peerless distillery review yet, but the single barrel bourbon at least, I was just under underwhelmed or I don't know which bourbon I tried. I don't think they had single barrels at the time, but single barrel rye was fantastic. The store, the, the picks they had out of the distillery, the single barrel picks of the rye were awesome. They had some really good single barrels, but the small batch is just very average. As they age, it's going to be, they're going to have incredible stuff. They really are. You know, Peerless is going to be great juice in a couple more years. And I hope the price will come down eventually, but I don't know the way they make their whiskey. It's, it's expensive to do so. Yep, Knob Creek, Russell's, Four Roses, McKenna, those are all included. Rebel Yell 100, I think, Blanton's. Um, I don't know. We'll see the thumbnail. You'll see the thumbnail next week. Oh, E.H. Taylor Single Bro, that's another good one, too. Um, I can't do eight whiskeys. I can't do eight whiskeys, Chris. I just can't. Eight whiskeys is too much. I won't get anything out of it. <laughs> Whiskey Rye, the bourbon guy. Awesome name, man. Cheers to you. Cheers to you on that name. Uh, four is good, but not as good as three. New Riff is possible, but the only one I have is a single barrel store pick, which is 111 proof. I could throw it in. It's higher proof, but Knob Creek's 120. But I can't do nine whiskeys. I can't do nine whiskeys. I can't. I just can't do nine. I can't. Glenn, Jack Daniels Barrel Proof is also single barrel. That's a good option, but I can't do ten whiskeys. I cannot do ten whiskeys. I can't. I just can't. It's too many. I don't have room on the table. <laughs> wow. Thank you guys all for hanging out. This is awesome. I'm drinking water. I'm drinking a lot of water, but it's not enough. Not enough water. Um, man, 120 you in chat. Thank you. This is this is crazy, man. I appreciate it. Go for 10. I can't, no, no, Anthony, you're a bad influence, buddy. I cannot do 10 whiskeys in one night. <laughs> I can't do nine whiskeys. Not with that attitude. You can't. Michael says. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all saying that. Uh, I could do them. You know what? That's a good idea, actually. March is coming. Do it bracket style. Single barrel bracket style. We can do 16. 16, 4, 4, 4, 4. We could do that. March is coming. Split them into two sessions. That'd still be 8 per session or 5 per set. Yeah. We could do a high proof single barrel head to head. And then we could do a... Like medium to moderate, you know, like 80 to 100 and then 100 plus or something. That, that's a We could do that. We could do that. I'll still do, I'll still do the live of the six I have planned and we'll see how it turns out. But then I'll do an episode or episodes, like a mini series, and we'll see what single barrel comes out on top. I like it. I like where your head's at. You guys are just full of ideas. Full of ideas. Uncle Nearest 1820 single barrel. Never had that one, Richie, but I cannot do 11 whiskeys. I can't. I can't. Vince Across says, not seven, then do eight. <laughs> ah, you guys. All right, we're pushing time now. I, see, I told you we'd be talking. I like all these. I just like all these. No point. Jack Daniels is already the winner. <laughs> I do like all these. Mictors is different. I mean, th these have got to be Mictors just based on flavor profile differences. It's different, but it's still good. Like, it's good in its own way, but $60 bottle upwards of $120 secondary bottle. I think I like these four more. The people demand a head-to-head -head live. 
we could do we could do our final like the final of the bracket what does Dustin say oh you you better watch it Dustin see Jason is a man what's your issue Chris <laughs> Well, I can't live up to Jason, I'm sorry. There's a reason he's so successful and I'm not. <laughs> These are good, man. These are still good, but they just... Not doing anything. David Cole says Matt from Whiskey Crusaders could do 30. <laughs> he, would, he would. In one night, I saw him live stream for five hours for their thousand sub. I, I like that one. I like that one. Hold. That's nice burn. Ay ay ay. Woo. Double oak is good, but I don't think it can hang. The key is going to be remembering which ones I like now. I think it was these two. <laughs> Friday night was dot 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 interesting. <laughs> Such good flavor profile, man. <sighs> All right. Oh, these two. That's the order. I think. <laughs> You're the man, Jason. I appreciate you. Oh, it's so difficult. Oh, it's so difficult. All right, I'm going this one higher. I, I'm. The BJs, man. The BJ Bros are really like blowing up man the, the, these videos they're putting out are perfect they're putting out the topics everyone wants to watch and they're getting a whole bunch of views and it's awesome their live streams are so fun to hang out and i love those guys thank you dream bam I've lost all sense of what's what. Um, it's got a little more alcohol burn. I think I'm going to go with this one because it's not as much alcohol burn. And that's hurting me for some reason. All right, let's see. Yes, please. Can uh, one of the mods please drop a link to Jason's live streams? We're going to head over there in like four minutes real quick as I go over my order here. Number five. If I was guessing... We all love BJ's. Yes, we do. I know. Sorry. Sorry, I had to say it. It's true. If I was guessing, I would say um, this is Michter's. I'm going to guess this is the Michter's Sour, but I don't know. This is a Pink X. My Pink X is the Toasted Bourbon. Oh, Wow. Damn it. Well, now when I smell them, I like this one more. <laughs> I do. This is more alcohol forward. All right, well, these are like interchangeable. Okay, interchangeably good. Okay. Wow, I thought toasted bourbon would finish way higher. Way higher. That means it finished below everything else. That's nuts. 
Again, still damn good. It is. If you can find it at retail, pick it up. But, wow. Um, so this has got to be toasted sour, right? Green toasted sour mash. So these were the Matrix products. I at least got that right. Delicious, but I was in more of a chocolatey, richer, deeper flavor profile today. Um, these both tasted a little bit grainy, a little bit young, at least in this lineup. That's why. You know, that's why I went for it. So this one, what is this? What is this? I don't know. Regular double oaked, I'm guessing. Pink. Regular wood for double oaked. Yep. Um, good. It's a store pick. It's good. It's chocolatey. It's creamy. It's rich. But a little more to the surface with the alcohol burn. Not as much depth. Not as much complexity. This one. I don't recognize this flavor profile. I'm going to guess this is the double double oak, but I don't know at all. Um, the green X. Green X is the 1910. I was going to guess that, but for some reason, one of these two reminded me more of the 1910. They're also similar with the way they finish their, their barrels and brown formed products. Still a fantastic product, guys. 1910 is awesome. That 1920. Mmm. That means we've got double double oaked Jack Daniels Heritage. Ay yay 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 yay. Oh, tell me what's what is it? What is it, guys? Drop it in there. Drop it in there right now. What's gonna win? Last minute change of roof. Oh, they're both so good. I'm sticking with it. All right. I don't know what these are going to be. Let's find out. I'm going to guess this is the, the heritage, but I don't know for sure. Orange X. Jack Daniels heritage. Wow. Double, double oat. The one that wasn't even supposed to be included tonight. Included tonight. Woodford Reserve. Double, double oat. Came out on top. Incredible. Wow. But let me just say... Jack Daniels Heritage, holy shit, that is some good stuff, guys. Um, yeah, if you can find a bottle of that, oh my gosh, get it, get it, get it hard. Double Dole looks much harder to find. The Heritage has a more, like it's more, it's more alcohol forward because it's higher proof, I think, but. On the palette, the depth and the complexity was more on the double double. They're both so good, man. Oh, they're both so good. I love them both. The fix is in. <laughs> I know. Hey, thanks for hanging out tonight. Um, awesome blind head to head. Awesome time. I'll have at least one episode out this week doing something. Maybe my blind rye head to head. Possibly my, um, just a Kentucky Owl review. I still have my bottle from uh, ADHD Whiskey. I'm going to be reviewing Kentucky Owl Batch 9. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's all head over to Jason right now. Let's give him some love. Drop in there. Um, let's see. What do we want to say in Jason's chat tonight? Let, let, let's drop some wild turkey shoot in Jason's, Jason's chat. Hashtag wild turkey shoot. Uh, awesome time, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Awesome double barrel bourbon blind. That's a mouthful. I don't think I can turn this stream off because I don't know how. So bear with me as I try. Uh, yeah, not working well. So have a good night. I'll see you all in Jason's stream very, very soon. Mm -hmm.